Welcome back. So, it has actually been a while since I've last recorded anything on this, and I'm sorry about that. I just haven't had a lot of time to work with. Uh, so, I did promise to do a dyeable item of some kind, and uh, I was actually working on something else, which wasn't really turning out like I was hoping to. So, I've got a different plan here, actually. And I will need to create a texture for that in just a moment. So, uh, actually I'll need two textures. So if we look here, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's any easy way for me to increase the text size. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up I updated Forge 1.14. or Minecraft 1.14.4, and I changed the Gradle properties back to include the MC version because the mappings we use are actually marked as 114.3. So uh, extracting that out was actually a bad idea. So I went ahead and changed this back to this format here. So uh, running 28.045, I don't know if that's the latest version, it was a couple days ago, and the 2019.08.06 mappings. Okay, so I was thinking of doing a backpack. Uh, there's a lot of backpack mods out there, so nothing too original, but uh, it just seemed like something that might be a good ideal. Uh, I was kind of hoping there'd be like a capsule shape here, but maybe not. Okay, I'll work with it. So I, I mostly use paint.net for creating textures, and it occurred to me recently that this is, um, actually that's pretty close to the shape I wanted, uh, only available in Windows. Okay, so probably did a small cut there, because the world knows that I'm recording, so uh, naturally this is when everything is going to fall apart and explode. Uh, it's just how it is. So, uh, this texture is probably not going to be that great for right now, but, uh, yeah, I might make it a bit better later on, but for now we just need something to work with here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was going to mention this is paint.net. This is the main program I use for creating textures. And as far as I know, it's only available on Windows. So uh, some other alternatives you could potentially use include GIMP. That is G-I-M-P. It's GNU Image Manipulation Program. And uh, Krita is another one that I've tried briefly and it seemed pretty good. It is um, K-R-I-T-A, I believe. And that one seemed pretty good for pixel art. Maybe like that. Uh, I don't know, this part seems too dark. Shouldn't have that much shading on it. Yeah, I shouldn't fuss over this too much. There, that'll work. Okay, so go back to the background here. And uh, so this lock part here, we're not going to color. I mean, you could actually make that so that's colored. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, I think I won't. Let's not overcomplicate this too much. Let's go ahead and fill that in with white. Uh, black outline is way too dark. Uh, what about that? And then we need a uh, not as dark gray. So if you look at most items in Minecraft, they typically have, um, like the newer textures have two colors on the outline, and the uh, top and the left tends to be a lighter color. So I'm mimicking that here. Let's see, maybe like that might be a bit too close. Okay, 
that'll work for now. And maybe add a little bit of shading. Maybe we could do something like that. Let's get a slightly lighter color. Uh, something like that. How does that look? I think that'll work. So the full item will look like this if it's white. I feel like maybe there should be a little bit more... That's the wrong layer. Up there. I don't know, that probably doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so we're going to save two separate textures here. So going into resources, assets, tutorial, textures, item, and we don't want to save a PDN, we want to save it as a ping file. So let's call this, uh, yeah, we'll call this part of the backpack and then the other one will be backpack lock or something like that. Okay, so flatten and going to undo. Bring the other layer forward. Make sure we are saving as a ping. Call that backpack lock. Maybe it'd be a class, but I don't know. Okay, so something else I meant to mention before getting interrupted uh, is... I swear I'm cursed. Okay, so what was I saying? Uh, we're not going to get to actually programming the backpack itself. We're just going to be focused on the uh, coloring at this point. So let's go ahead and create an item class for it. Backpack item. And where is presentation mode? Did that change? Okay, I found it. That is harder to get to now. Okay, that's great. Alright, so extending item. I think we know the drill by now, and oh yeah. Let me fix that issue. That's just something I was trying to uh, create a warning for uh, methods that were marked as client-side only. Not only did it not work, but somehow that's managed to stick around and it uh, now thinks everything matches that inspection. I have no idea what's going on anymore. IntelliJ is weird. Okay, so did we have our own item group? I think we did. Yes. So max stack size of 1. Wouldn't make sense to have more. And I think that's all we need to do. Okay, so eventually we're going to want to add something where the backpack will uh, open up an inventory, and I think that'll be on item right-click. Yeah, I think on item use is when you click on a block. On item right-click is when you just click otherwise. But uh, that's not something we need to worry about for right now. Let's go ahead and register our item. Okay, and probably want a reference to it as well. Okay, and uh, I believe Forge currently has a bug. I don't I think they may have patched it recently, uh, where color handler events can sometimes fire before items are registered. So I'm going to go ahead and construct the item here. Normally I would do it in the register method, but um, I'm not going to do that in this case. So register 
we'll just call it backpack and the backpack item. Actually, I wonder, is the object holder annotation still here? Yeah, um, I don't actually know much about how this works. Uh, this can populate fields, and it's nice because uh, you can leave them as final. But uh, when I tried this a while back, it unfortunately caused a lot of uh, warnings to pop up because it said the field could, could be null. So personally, I don't like using that. Um, so we'll just leave it like this. It'd be actually we can make this final in this case since we're assigning it up here. So that'll work. Okay, so we're gonna need to create an item model. Okay, so created that in Explorer and I'll edit it here. So First layer we we're going to leave is backpack. Then we're going to add a second layer, call that layer one, and that'll be our lock. So do take note of the layer numbers here because we're going to need these in a minute. Uh, we want this layer, layer zero, to be colored, but uh, we don't want layer one to be colored in this case. You could change it so that you can affect what color this is if you wanted to. And um, probably going to have to exit presentation mode. So let's see here. We need, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a client package. And in here, I'm going to create a class called color handlers. Okay, so I'm going to do, I always forget which event bus these are on. I think these are life cycle events. Yeah, okay, so we'll need to register these elsewhere. So I'm gonna create a public static void method called register item colors, maybe. So this is gonna be color handler event dot item. And in here, we're going to say event get item colors register, and we're going to need an i item color and an i item provider, which just be our item. So let's come back to that first parameter. Second parameter is going to be mod items backpack, and this is why we needed to initialize that before we potentially register it because this could possibly fire before items are registered. That may be fixed by the time you're watching this, but uh, just keep that in mind. So for the iItem color, we can actually take a look at that. This is a functional interface. So it is item stack and int goes to int. So what we're doing is we're taking an item stack, which we can then pull data from the NBT, and an int, which is uh, typically called tint index, and that's going to be the layer that we saw before. And then we're going to be returning the color as an int. So we could actually write this as a lambda expression. So something like stack tint index goes to whatever you want here. O oftentimes, I'll just add a method on the item class itself which might be it's probably the easier way. So I typically call this get item color and we're going to give it the same signature as that functional interface so we can just use a method reference. Okay. And we don't currently have anything that is controlling our backpack color. So why don't we go ahead and create a constant called that NBT color and let's say backpack color. So that's the key we'll be using to store our color. And let's go ahead and create hmm. 
How do we want to do this? Say a public static void method. Do we need a get backpack color? Let's just do this. Yeah, I guess we can. Get backpack color. And that will take an item stack. And for this, what we want to do is stack dot get or create tag dot get int and then our nbt key. And actually that's supposed to return int. Okay, let's do a set color as well. And you can make these non-static and just reference them through the item. I typically do static. Actually, that's a void int color. So in this case, stack dot get or create tag dot put int a key and then the color. Okay, so back to get item color. So if we're on tint index zero, that's the the backpack itself, so we want to return get backpack color of stack. And for all other cases, we're going to return white. Okay, so back to color handlers and go ahead and replace this incomplete lambda expression here with backpack item get item color. And what is your problem? I didn't make that static, did I? Yeah, let's make that static. That would be why I couldn't find it. Okay, so now we actually need to call this. So in our side proxy, we're going to go into client, go to its constructor, and we're going to add a listener, color handlers, register item colors. Okay, so let's go back to the backpack item and... So what we're doing here, we... We're going towards making it so that it can be dyed any color like leather armor, but uh, why don't we just, as an example, fill up, uh, instead of just putting like a plain white one in for, in the uh, creative tab, why don't we do one of each uh, vanilla dye color? So let's override fill item group. This was called get sub items, I believe in earlier Minecraft versions. So we're going to say if is in group group, then we are going to see for I believe it's die color color in die color dot values. We want to create a backpack with this color. So item stack stack will be a new item stack of this. Then we're going to say set backpack color stack and color dot um I think get firework color is the best choice in this case. So let's try that and then we will add that to the items list. Like that. Okay, so that should be enough to demonstrate. The backpacks actually being colored Now we can't craft these just yet. But we should be able to see them colored. Okay, and I did not update my mods.toml file. Okay, so. 
loader version 28, Forge 28 and up, Minecraft version 1.14.4. There. And now that should run. And I know this project still says Tutorial 1.13. <laughs> I just haven't bothered to update that. I did update the repo name, at the very least. Okay, um... It's been a while since I've seen this world. So let's see. And there we go. So there's our backpack items. I did not add the localization for them. But you can see that we have a, a variety of different colors to choose from now. Alright, so uh, like I said before, if you wanted to make it so that the lock part could be colored somehow, you could do that as well. You can have up to five layers on an item model. Uh, beyond that, Minecraft just starts to ignore any additional layers, unfortunately. So it is a bit limiting. It's good enough for most purposes. Alright, so could go ahead and add that localization. And I think that's all we need to do for there. So the next thing that we could do is add recipes to actually craft them. We'll also need a recipe for re-dyeing the backpacks. But I think I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Um, let me see. What was it called? Armor die recipe. This is the class I think it is. I think this might be the recipe that does letter armor dying. Yeah, that's it. So this uh, die armor, or armor die recipe class, if you're wanting to go ahead and look into this, this is uh, probably what you would want to copy more or less. Uh, I do recognize this code in particular. It, it, I know it looks like a mess, but um, actually I can't remember if I, what I did with that exactly. But I do have an item. No, I think it was modify soul urn recipe. That uh, yeah, it has. You can see there's some very similar code here. Although I did rename all of the variables to. Uh, I was just trying to understand what exactly was going on with this code. So uh, if you want to check out Silence Gems, uh, the modify soul urn recipe, which I imagine is in crafting recipe. Yeah. So, crafting, recipe, and that's where all my recipe classes are. So we'll be doing something fairly similar to this in the next part. And uh, I think it'd also be cool if we made it so that, uh, I assume we'll be crafting the backpacks with wool, uh, we could also make it uh, take on the color of the wool that we use when we first craft them, and then they can re be re-dyed later. And actually, I could show the uh, soul urns if anyone is curious. These have been around for a little while, but they're still one of the newer items in the mod. So uh, you can actually uh, have tint indexes different colored layers with uh, with blocks as well. Let me see if I can find that. I know this mod has just so many blocks and items, but uh, you can see there's a tint index property here. And I'm not 100% sure how this works. I know with the soul urn models this works just fine. I was trying to do a block that we could color earlier and for whatever reason it was just not liking this at all. 
But the solar ends actually have two separate layers that uh, can be colored separately. So yeah, I think this is a newer world, so I don't probably doesn't have any just laying around. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, I've got one in my inventory, so um, just to show you what I mean, it's got two separate layers there, and they can be colored in any combination. So just something like that. Actually, they're not supposed to have a name tag when you hover over them. I need to fix that at some point. Alright, so I'm going to call this here. So we added the backpack. We've got it so that it can be colored by setting an NBT property. Uh, next time, we'll either probably do the recipes for dyeing them, and then after that we can start looking into actually making them function. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next part.